Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Bolstered by the semi-success on our passenger door, we're gonna charge headlong into a battle we will most likely lose today. What is that? That is the battle with the cowl. So dramatic. Let's dig in here and take a close look at what we've got going on. So we're over here on the driver's side and it is pretty hammered. Basically, the first three inches on both sides are in really bad shape and they have a lot of holes that have just been filled with Bondo. In fact, just grinding to try to find some metal to tack these doors in, we created a whole lot of Bondo dust. The reason these are so bad, maybe you guys can see over there, I'm not really sure, but there is a brace that runs on the edge of the cowl the sheet metal attaches to on the outside. In fact, it even wraps around it. So that area can collect leaves and garbage and whatever else. So on both sides, it's been, it's rusted out and all they did was fill it with Bondo. So we've got to get into that and figure out how to make new ones of these. You may notice some Frankenstein scars. I got one on this side. And I got one right over here. So what I did before I started any of the, you know, the, the this that you're watching, was I cut this section out, unbolted it, and basically peeled it away from this front thing because, I'll see if I can find a picture, this was hit by a tree. This was all bashed in, totally, totally, totally hosed. So the only, I couldn't get a hammer and dolly in there well enough to make any kind of shape out of it. So it had to come out and I worked it on the bench. It's still, you know, I'm a little concerned that I may have to cut this weld because if you look, I'm like a 16th off too far back. I'm a little off here and I'm a little off here. So, Part of that is how the metal stretched and bent when the tree hit. This is the only dent in the actual firewall. So I'm not 100% sure of what I've got going on there. On this side over here, we have similar rust issues. The opposite side, these are the holes for our windshield stanchion. We're gonna have to address all of that. I don't even know what, like the top of the cowl is, it's bad. It's maybe it was covered in leaves or something for a long time. I'm not 100% sure how it got so bad, but they filled it with Bondo, which really, unfortunately doesn't help anything. It really just traps moisture. And this whole front lip is in a similar situation. The dog already looks nervous about this. So we've got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of metal work to do to make this more better. But before we start all of this stuff, there's one other thing we need to do. Let me Vanna White this for you. What these Vanna White maneuvers ought to show you is that the cowl is able to pivot basically this way, probably can rotate, yep, yep. I'm kind of able to twist it this way. And the reason I'm able to do that is it's not attached to a subframe. Now the subframe it used to be attached to, if you go back a video or two, you will find that it is rotten and gone and doesn't really exist. So, we have to figure out how to make this thing square. And... Alright fellas, our tour day disaster is not over yet. Let's talk about how to even find a starting point. So, to further complicate things, this is not on a level table. This table is sitting on top of our model A-frame, which is jacked up in all sorts of weird ways. When you're dealing with something as hammered with this, you've got to use all your forensical evidence, like NCIS hot rod. When I stand back, this looks right to my eyeball, but I know a tree can hear so things can be cattywampus that way. First things first, let's figure out what's going on with the firewall because it is our strongest, most beefiest, most Johnny Bravoist 
piece of metal. It's the thickest and it's got a heavy stamping, so that should help it be one of the straighter parts. But the NCIS part is finding evidence of where that's not true anymore. If you look at this side, it actually kind of looks right. Looking over here, this looks like it's actually pinched in a little bit to me. We do have some evidence that things might be a little bit not as they should be. We've got a huge dent here. So that, not huge, but you know, we're talking a dent. And it runs this away, which could bend the whole thing in a butterfly shape towards us. That's one thing. We also have some evidence here of something strange happening. This is broken. This is dented. That looks okay. And in theory, you know, this is the, our weakest part down here. I don't know if I can, I mean, I can rotate it, but I don't know if I can pull it this way. One of the things we can do to try to see if we're even close is to pull some diagonal reference markers. To do that, you sort of need something symmetrical on both sides. Square, that's like the only word for it. That um, but this point and our bottom point over there are equally distant from center and not in a racked form. This is confusing. Just leave a comment. I will call Dr. Science, have him on the show, explain how to use diagonals to prove that something is square even if the shape is not a square as opposed to a parallelogram or a rhombus. So I have roughly 29 and 3 quarters inches from the center of this hole to where this stamping meets the end of the firewall. Um, basically at the very bottom here. So let's try it this way. Interesting. So I have 30 and a quarter going this way. So what that tells me is we are a half an inch off, which means we are racked just a little bit this way, making this distance further, which makes sense because it got hit by a tree falling this way. So the whole thing is bent just a little bit. So there's two ways to solve this. If we rack it this way, we're gonna move this point closer to that point. If this stays still and this racks. Alternatively, if we move this point out and make it further from that point, we should equal out everything. So I think our wiggle is over on this side. Now, we gotta see if we can find a way to open that up and hold it where it's supposed to go. All right, little update. What we've done now is clamped a piece of steel, just one inch box steel that I had laying around. The bottom of our box steel is flush with the bottom edge of our firewall. So our new points for measurement are the rivet hole to where it intersects, where this line intersects with our box steel. So now we are at 30 this way and 30 this way. The marks on my steel are still in the right place here. So our steel did not slide when we went this way. And if you look at our marks here, you can tell that we've actually shifted a good quarter of an inch, moving this piece out. So that's good news. All right, so we've got two tacks on this side and two tacks over there. That should be more than enough for us to release our clamps. This should keep this thing from pivoting, I hope. And then the structure up here should be more than enough. All right, so out there in TV land, some of you guys are thinking, you big dummy, why didn't you just start with the cowl? It obviously was jacked and crooked and everything else. And I'd be like, you guys are right, but I didn't want to. It was intimidating. And sometimes you just gotta force yourself all the way to the end of the plank before you leave. So basically I worked my way this way. I ran out of room to go. Now I have to, and that's, you know, if you don't have the motivation or the confidence, just back yourself right into a corner, fight your way back out.
These aren't particularly good tacks. It's just that this battery is basically spinning this whoop de doo at, you know, carousel speeds. It's very leisurely. See that thing that just happened? <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we're about free here. All right, team. So in a very unorthodox maneuver around here, I went ahead and cleared off the workbench. The process we completed on the front, we now have to complete on the back. This is going to be a little bit trickier, but let's just quickly state our goals. A tree or some large ninja or something came in and did a karate chop right here on our cowl, forcing everything a little bit this way, breaking some stuff, and denting our cowl badly. I've knocked a lot of the dent out, but let's look for more evidence of this, you know, karate chop, large impact thing that is now causing us the grief. Typically, this would be attached to the subrail and this would be attached to the subrail. Our subrails are rotten, and before that, some bubbas had been in here. This was still attached to its original location. I cut it. This, on the other hand, is some weird piece of strap steel that was added by one or two bubbas back in the day. So I have no idea if that was actually in the right place. However, what I do know is at the time of impact, this and this were attached to something. Why is that important? Well, because it means that because these were firmly attached and the impact was up here coming this way, our body rocked like so and most likely did it up here because this is the weakest point. And we're gonna look closer at this. Why is this the weakest point? Well, this was attached to the subframe here. This was attached to the subframe down here. The front of the firewall is very strong. And then we can really, really, really look. Our little dashboard thing also does add structure. So the weakest, weakest point, the place that we would have a hinge, especially if there were no doors on the car, which there don't seem to have been at the time, is right here. And we have similar cracks on both sides. Let's take a look. So this is a cut I made, but all of this crumbliness, let's see if I can rock the body while I hold the camera, that gap will open and close just enough. And we have similar issues over here. In fact, if you look really closely at this evidence, right, this broke and opened, this broke and overlapped. So as this side got hit, it stretched this basically apart and then the impact ran across and then crushed this and forced this piece behind this piece. So what that tells me is on this side, we probably need to rack out. And on this side, we may need to rack in just a little bit to close this. This may have popped back to its normal happy place, but I'm not really sure. This definitely feels bent in. So what we've got to do is find some symmetrical points to pull our measurements off of. We have hinge mounting positions here, here, None of them are perfect, right? They're kind of wallered out and all of that stuff, but they'll give us an idea. So maybe the thing to do is to just go from hinge to hinge, diagonally this way and then diagonally this way, and let's see. All I'm doing is eyeballing the center of the hole the best I can. Perfection is not what we're after. Pretty darn close is what we're going for. Got 38 and a half inches. If we go the other way, seeing 39 and a half inches. What that means is we are one inch out of square in our diagonal, which means if we rack this thing, we only have to rack it about a half an inch because we'll move it a half inch in both directions, right? We'll move our long dimension a half inch shorter and our short dimension a half inch longer by doing that. And that's our one inch. Question is just how to do that. This distance needs to grow. 
Uh, that's relatively simple in this particular case. In theory, I can just move this side outwards. You can see the entire thing flexing when I do that. Really what I want to do is try to bend that just enough. You can see the entire thing moving. You can watch right here. But while I'm watching this moving, I'm observing to see what, what evidence there was of where it broke to figure out where the initial bend is. Because there's a lot of ways to force this out of shape. What I'm trying to do is force it back into its original shape. So I see the metal cracking right here. And I can tell by moving this, that's right where it wants to flex. And that makes me believe that that's, in fact, where it broke in the first place. So if I had a third hand, it'd be in great shape. What I'll try to do is bend this out. I'm going to try to tap this metal back in line. It's not quite a bit. One of the tricks with this, as you'll see, is like everything moves and flexes and if you're to try to hold anything in place after you've bent it, you sort of have to leverage off something else, some other part of the car. And uh, there's not a lot to do that with here. Although I think I'm... Maybe I'm just bending it back. Let's see. So let's see how we did. Measurement wise, you'll also notice this thing rocking back and forth because there's part of a patch panel in on this side, there's no patch panel in over here. This is sometimes, you know, it's the mess you're working with if you buy junkyard parts. Personally, little philosophy, I don't believe in taking a decent car and cutting it up to make it a hot rod. I'd much rather have a piece of junk that like Really, this is a lot more project than any restorer would want to take on. There are just better cars out there. To me, that makes it a perfect candidate for a hot rod because it would just take a monumental amount of effort to restore this car almost to the point. Kind of like the ship of Theseus. By the time we restored it, there'd be so little of the original car left. It's, you know what I mean? You see what I'm getting at here? Can you feel that? So anyway, this is perfect hot rod fodder. This may be the garbage you end up with if this is what you're going to build. So I'm just trying to, you know, anyway, let's do some measuring. All right, still 39 and a half here. We are now 39. It's good news. So we've gained a half inch. We were 38 and a half. That's one and a half inch by wrestling. Let's see if we can bend it some more. The tiniest bend up here will equal a lot down here. Um, I guess one other thing I could do is so measure it's three foot one. Let's see if I've got let's see if I got something I can jam in here. So I was just wrestling this. I was basically like holding up here and just wrenching this out. And I was able to get this crack lined up where it clearly broke when things, you know, that was the, that was the point that gave it up. 
and then I wanged it with a hammer. So this is actually just being held under tension. It's actually trying to bend back a little bit. Um, but at least now my measurements from side to side are pretty close. So I'm trying not to get too much into the details of exactly how I'm doing this, but show you a couple of methods or techniques of the wrestling and where to look. Um, because it's very unlikely that your piece of garbage got hammered in the same way as mine. But I feel like this is useful. If you don't know what you're looking for and you have a cowl that's just, you know, sitting in a pile of parts that you're eventually gonna have to attach things to, it might be a good idea to run the diagonals from door hinge top to bottom on and make a big X and see, see if you're square before you attach it to your subframe. This is another thing that will be an issue if you decide to channel your car and you cut the original subframe out before your body's braced, your body's not braced well enough or something goes cattywampus. Now that we've got this kind of forced into shape, it's really just held in by friction right here. And clearly by the disaster that is this thing and the way that it broke, we've got to fix all this. But I can't cut this out because if I do, everything will just go ka -ta twang so the plan is we're just going to weld in this brace from this side on our actual steel structure to the top of our actual steel structure up here. Little thing about tack welding braces and stuff in. Try to think ahead because you're going to want to be able to cut this out and I don't want to have to like be a contortionist to hit these welds. So right now I can just zap them with a grinder. That's why this is on the back side of the brace. Still moves a little more than a guy would like. Let's try this. All right, this silliness is not gonna win any like internet pretty metal awards, but it doesn't need to. At this point, this front half is moving in as, as a unit. Our flex is all in the sheet metal along the sides. Basically, we're able to move in two planes now. Our front is braced, so it's good here. Our back is braced, and those two can move relative to each other. But well, that's going to be all right for now. We'll still have that flex when we go to put it on our subframe. What this is doing is holding these points relative to each other enough for us to do our metalwork. That's kind of going to do it for this episode. We're going to get into the metalwork in the next episode. But I just wanted to show you in case you're suffering from a similar ailment with a bent out of shape cowl or any other part of your car. That's kind of how you approach it. Run your diagonals, brace it to hold it there. Then you can go on and fix all of your other stuff. I hope you're starting with something better than this on your project, but if you're not, don't be afraid. I applaud you. Don't be intimidated. It's just a little hot rod. You can fix it. Good luck on your projects. Thanks for watching Between the Sharks. I really appreciate it. We'll see you soon when we really, you know, make this better. All right, guys. Farewell.